my my love my love el mio amore for psychoanalysis in Buenos Aires, Argentina. We had uh, open lectures at the School of Medicine and we organized as a students the great lectures at the Faculty of Medicine. And I start my own analysis here. I have a marvelous, marvelous personal analysis which is the most important thing. Uh, and after I, 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 I studied and I lived uh, in Paris. So my, my mind was uh, shocked by a different way of thinking, the culture, and uh, the language also is not Spanish. Uh, even my wife is from a French family um, and I had the uh, luck uh, so molto ringraziato uh, the great teachers I had in here marvelous uh, personal analysis and the great teachers in, in Paris and, uh, I was a uh, child analysis with Le Beauvoisier, René Diatkin, and, and I had the chance to be near uh, child analysis and the seminar on psychosis. Uh, I was allowed, uh, ma hanno dato permesso alla Società Psicanalitica de Paris, de, mi hanno, they received with the open hands. Uh, allora questa cosa è con molto carino, eh, I was allowed to go to the seminars, um, seminars on psychosis and psychopathology, and at the same time I studied in the Sorbonne University, uh, because I studied philosophy here, and I was allowed to be uh, at Sorbonne in the fourth year in philosophy there. So, philosophy, French culture, psychoanalysis, and it was the golden age of Paris for me because I was with the great teacher psychoanalysis and after that night I studied with Jean-Paul Sartre philosophy and the Sorbonne philosophy. Uh, Sartre fighting against levi which is uh, 500 blocks with Sartre and after levi fighting with him it was marvelous. Uh, the music and the singing and uh, it was a great change in my mind. In a lead, I learned to not be a fanatic. Uh, I learned from my grandmother and my grandfather to be open-minded. So I, I was able to absorb different ways of thinking. Uh, but thanks to the great teachers I have, and uh, my wife also, she became psychoanalyst and psychiatrist, and like myself, psychiatrist. And after we came to, we came back to Buenos Aires, and we finished the psychoanalytic seminar in the Argentine Society, which was four years. And uh, in the meantime, we, we had here very good teachers, really it was, Marvelous because Buenos Aires had uh, the person who brought uh, uh, the theory of communication from Bateson Vatslavic, which is great, but as, uh, as they fight against the psychoanalysts in the United States, um, no one American psychoanalyst accepted the theory. Only two psychoanalysts in the world use the theory of communication, Bateson, Vaslavic. One was in Paris, Didier Anzier, my teacher also, Didier Anzier, Annie Anzier, and in Buenos Aires was Lieberman. So, and the other thing we had in Buenos Aires is the first book on countertransference was written here by Enric Racker. So we had the first book on countertransference. 
it was great because you have at this time uh, the poetry, the writers, the actors very close to psychoanalysis. Why? You know what was the language who translated first the complete works of Sigmund Freud? Spanish. The first time all the all the 20 volumes of Sigmund Freud books the first complete translation was made in Spanish, in Spain. Who corrected the translation? You know? Sigmund Freud himself. Sigmund Freud spoke Spanish, but it was the secret language between the gymnasium and the high school. And he corrected the first version of the, the 20 volumes of Freud. So we receive here in Buenos Aires, complete works of Freud. At uh, this period we have the Surrealist, the painting, Dali, the poetry, Berlin, Toussaint. Uh, we have plenty of poetry here. Buenos Aires is a city made by immigrants. Mexico is made by the Aztecas. Peruvian by the Incas. Buenos Aires by the ships. So it's a little piece of Europe was this, open to surrealism, to Freud, to, to unconscious. This is the most important reception of Freud paper here. This is the origin. Why is so important psychoanalysis here? And it was a great moment in Argentina. And after it all was destroyed with the military dictatorship during many, many years, it was terrible and we were not able to study at the university, it was very dangerous. My book on group analysis, group psychotherapy, I need to take it out from my office. They consider the one who made groups is organizing uh, guerrilla groups against the military. It's not a joke. I need to finish my group psychotherapy, my books. My book on Sartre, I take it out from here also. And Sartre sent me the, the, the journal, uh, Le Temps Moderne, the review. Uh, I asked them, uh, Sartre, to send me that envelope in another title. So they sent me the journal uh, review, Le Temps Moderne, enveloped in another title. It was terrible. And so we spent a lot of money uh, trying to take my three children, two daughters and my son, to spend all we can to study it outside the country. We put all the money in to study it outside the country, to live a freedom in France, in England, and to teach, to learn. They learn that in Paris, when it was election in Paris, uh, when uh, it was an election and one discussed it against the policemen and they discussed and my children, my son, they were terrified. The police will kill him. And I said, no, here in, in Paris is not like Argentina. You can discuss. The police is not like Argentina. This is uh, what I want to, to teach to my children, the other countries other ways of living. And after I supervised also back to Paris, but I supervised 16, 17 years, each year one month or two months, living in, in London, January. And, and it was a glorious moment of uh, psychoanalysis in, in London. And, uh, I don't know why, but I, I, I was uh, lucky. Como se dice sorte? Uh, lucky, because they received me with the open hand, hands, and they, they gave me a special fees, uh, prices to supervise. We live uh, all together in one room. Uh, we put all the money in traveling. It's not a joke. We never had 
see, uh, chairs in, in my in my home. We put all the money in traveling, is living outside the country in January in London, and it was the great moment in London, and I had the chance to supervise with genius, which they changed me my mind. But I don't lose my training in Buenos Aires. I don't lose my what I learned in Paris. I, I put all together. And it was genius in London. I had clinical cases. Uh, uh, for instance, Herbert Rosenfeld. After 15 years, I told him, Dr. Herbert, uh, we decided that you will become my uncle. Okay, my new. So, uh, Hannah Siegel, Meltzer, and uh, and even I supervised with the clay, and, and I had cases with uh, a very ill patient in the skin. And one of my first papers on skin disorders, uh, I was supervised with Esther Bick. And Esther Bick, she changed my mind. What has I to do with babies, one year, six years. She changed me my mind. It, it was a revolution. The important, the fifth year of life, and, and the skin problems it was. And she supervised this paper many years. And, uh, and I will tell you an anecdote. Usually, uh, Anna Freud was a terrible fight against Melanie Klein and the Kleinian. Terrible. Uh, now is in Paris a great psychoanalyst, uh, Resnick, great psychoanalyst, a great teacher. When he came here, I supervised with him, a great, great psychoanalyst. And one he told me that when he went to, to a lecture in, in the Anna Freud clinic, Anna Freud said, you outside, for <laughs> So he said, David never go to Anna Freud because she, she must know that you super with the Kleinian group. She, you know what happens? Just lucky, I don't know why. She invited me and my wife to his home to take a tea, a biscuits, and uh, after she invited me to the school she had at the, at the home, and after she invited me to the clinical seminar at the Anna Freud Center. And when I said this to my colleagues, they said, no, it's not possible. Yes. I don't know, but I was very lucky in life to have such a good people as teacher near me. And all what I, I learned from Anna Freud directly, nothing to do with the denigration. Como è denigrazione? because they, they invented uh, 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 la, como se dice, la, la bruja de witch, the, uh, la strega. La strega. Me, me, Anna Freud no era la strega, era una brillante psicanalista. She was a brilliant psychoanalyst in, a, in, a, in the clinic, supervising. Of course, Herbert Roosevelt was the number one and I supervised psychosis with him, all my psychotic patients. It was, uh, well, I will tell you something. Uh, uh, he said, I would like to put in my book one chapter you supervise with me during years. Would be the first time I will put uh, another person in one chapter of my book, which is in Pass on Psychoanalysis, the last book. But he died, and my my chapter never was included in the in the book. A pity because it was two volumes. They published only one. It's a pity. I had the the draft copy. But and after, I was able to live in New York, and to study at New York, uh, Columbia University. Uh, a great psychoanalyst helped me to go to the uh, Cornell Hospital, a New York hospital, because they had a lot of uh, drug addict patient treatment, and 
transsexual patient, which was absolutely new for me. And I was the first interview with a transsexual patient. So I had another shock in my mind. Otra revolución en la mia testa, otra forma de pensiero. Pensiero, no? Another way of thinking. And I discovered the they are not uh, the witches, non sono la strega, le americane, meravigliosi clinicians, wonderful clinicians, wonderful. So it was the discovery that they are marvelous clinicians, but they write in a different way, so they fight in the International Congress by the words, not by the clinical practice. So I said, people are crazy. They fight about words, but not about the clinical practice. I saw genius super, so, uh, showing clinical material. Otto Kernberg, a genius. Roy Sheffer, I used to make seminars. He, he interviewed uh, patients uh, uh, at the Cornell and Columbia University. Clinical genius. Bryce Boyer, a genius in the clinical practice with psychotic patients. And, of course, Harold Searles. So, so I had in my, as I was, uh, uh, when I was a student and finishing, I was resident, so this is residential, uh, al Hospitale Psychiatrico of Buenos Aires. I put in the book, uh, que cosa he aprito? I learned it there. I learned what not to do with a patient. Che cosa non deve fare con un paziente? Io eh, aprito all all'ospedale medievale di Buenos Aires. E allora, eh, come è stato qui, io sono ricevuto molto paziente psicotico. As I was a resident in the psychiatric hospital, they sent me psychotic patient, and I had the chance to have. Bryce Boyer, Harold Searle, the great teachers, and it was the number one in the world. I was lucky because they received with the open mind, and, but I had my own mind to receive. That's I re, and my common sense. And this cannot be teach in the seminars. It comes from the childhood and the family. Uh, people who said uh, Freud uh, uh, was close to psychosis because they never read Freud papers in 1938, 1940. They never read the last papers, and I quote. Since the analysts have never relaxed the effort to come to an understanding of the psychosis, they had managed, no in this phrase and no in that, to get a glimpse, to get a glimpse beyond the wall. But the mere theoretical gain is not to be despised, and we may be content to wait for its practical application. In the long run, even the psychiatrist cannot resist the convincing thought of their own clinical material. And Freud said also about psychosis, they never read those Freud papers. I, this is very important, Freud. Transference is not so completely absent. absent. Transference is not so completely absent, but that it can be used to a certain extent, an analysis had achieved unlouted success with psychical depression, light paranoia modification, and partial schizophrenia. And now is one of the last papers, 38, when he said that in each patient we can find a healthy person. This is 
how he wrote in German is the poetry. In English is very well translated in the standard edition. Put attention. Even in a state so far removed from the reality of the hallucinatory confusion, which is psychosis at this time, even in a state so far removed from the reality of the hallucinatory confusion, that at one time, at one time, in some corner of their mind, their, their mind, there was a normal person hidden. I repeat, in the psychosis, he said, that at one time, in some corner of their mind, there was a normal person hidden. This is the revolution in Freud. But a lot of psychologists, they never read Freud 1938. It is a discovery that even you can work with one healthy part in psychotic patient. And this is what I learned in Paris. I learned it with the supervisions in London and with the great teacher in the United States, Bryce Boyer and Harold Siddles. To recover the healthy part, it is always, always, always hidden in some part of the corner, in the corner of their mind. This is Freud, and this is my way of thinking psychosis. It's possible to, to, to do it. Technically, it's very difficult, but I had the chance to have very good uh, private clinics here, where the director of the residence, most of them were uh, uh, the director of psychoanalyst also, a lot of residents in private clinic, they like to be close to psychoanalysis, so we have uh, an envelope to can help me, me to work with a psychotic patient, even in a hospitalization. I never had problems to give uh, sessions in a private clinic and hospitalization uh, once a day. I work like an in intensive te uh, unit, uh, therapy unit, uh, intensive uh, therapy. When you have a patient with uh, cardiac problems and an intensive, the doctor is obliged to visit the patient twice a day. Well, I work with this type of, of uh, thinking in my mind. When a patient starts with an acute psychosis, it's necessary to work with him like an intensive care unit, once a day, sometimes twice a day. At the beginning, the first three months, uh, you will see in my last book, I will, you have here and you will receive it in English and French. I started uh, every day after uh, he uh, left the psychiatric hospital, even he asked me twice a day. But this is my way of thinking, uh, technically. I remember that in Montreal, I was allowed to earn my interview to, to patients. And one doctor in the Montreal Canada Hospital said, but it's not a personal problem of you to see a psychotic patient every day. And I, I remember I answered him, we are in the great uh, Montreal Hospital here in Canada. And you ask me a question, you are a physician, a doctor, yeah? Did you work in the United Intensive Therapy? Yes. So you have a cardiac problem. You visit them twice a week? No, every day. Well, I work in intensive care unit with an acute psychosis. That was my answer, and I explain you my way of thinking. And if you work in intensity in the first two months in an acute psychosis, you can obtain more that with a rigid uh, setting. Psychotic patient usually, they never uh, uh, use the couch here. They walk, they sit here, sometimes they sit here on the floor, and the setting is created in the mind, not in the couch. And the setting is created after long months of treatment. 
the introjection of what is the fixed hour, the fixed 50 minutes, it takes years. It must be created. The setting must be created. It does not exist. If you explain the patient, you come three times, four times, 50 minutes, this is a commercial contract. This is not the setting inside the mind. So the setting is a dialectic process who must be created. <laughs> this is my influence on Jean Paul Sartre. La dialectique, the dialectic process in psychoanalysis. And the same thing I think about in English, projective identification, in Spanish, identification projectiva, in French is uh, identification projective. I had a great teacher in, in, in Paris, uh, Racamier, who is what the most important in psychosis. And he invented another word, who was used also by Andre Green. Uh, why uh, does not explain all projective identification? In French, it's the reverse. In Spanish, identification projective. He said, it is an injection. He used the word injection. So you put one part of what is inside the injection inside the other. And this was uh, a Racamier definition. Andre Green used it also this. And, and, but uh, if you don't learn what is this uh, mechanism by clinical supervision, you will never understand this. Uh, and as I, I am uh, an enfant terrible, uh, un giovane che costa di discutere, to fight all the theories, uh, I can say projective identification does not exist, must be created. If you don't have a mother who receives the anxious, the crying, uh, the fear, the terror of a baby, the baby never could be able to project the fears and the other person to receive back uh, a music, a song, a lullaby, uh, a kiss from the mother or the father. This is created. This is why there are patients who never can use projective identification to communicate. They stopped. And this is one explanation of the origin of autism. Questioni che è un psicotico. Io credo che tu, Ballarino, you speak about a, a fixed psychosis, and all my papers are about young people with an acute psychosis. So, uh, an adolescent with an acute psychosis is an acute psychosis could be not be a chronic psychotic patient. I work with this type of psychosis. It's a psychotic episode in adolescent or a young boy, a young girl. And this is an acute psychosis. It's not a chronic, rigid psychosis. If you treat this at the beginning, it becomes an acute psychosis and will never be after the chronic psychosis. This is my, my hope, my, I, I am a person which has hope, hope, sometimes crazy hope, to cure, uh, to cure autistic children, and I do it. And I think that in, in, the, in acute psychosis, you can avoid the rigidification and the chronic state of psychosis. Sometimes you can obtain a good uh, result, and after you had uh, a residues, uh, un poco di uh, resta. Ma questo è una chiusa psicosi. E la cronica psicosi con delusions uh, is different. Uh, you need to help to understand and to be more or less adapted to reality. But I work mostly with an acute psychosis in adolescents and young people. In this, I, I, 
I show can this could be cured if you work with sessions every day or two sessions a day. This is a hope I had and as I am a little crazy with my hope, I do it. And I show it in clinical material. And this happened with uh, autistic children. I was the director of a center of autism and children hospital in Buenos Aires. And uh, I learned it a lot. First with uh, Le Bobisi in Paris, we saw autistic children. So I was very curious, why, why, why? Um, so, uh, why, why uh, an autistic child became so isolated? Why? So I had a chance to study it. I saw the first case with Le Bobichy, but I found the great, the great teacher on autism, which is in London, Frances Tustin. Uh, she was a revolution for me. She had the capacity to treat three autistic children a day, and she had a way to try to explain the mystery. And it was a great influence in me, a great, great influence. Well, we can try to explain, but uh, we cannot uh, stop the wars. Uh, and the murders and the genocide with explanations. We are trying to understand the psychotic part of the mind who lost the ethics and the other person became a non-human object. We found this in a schizophrenic patient. The other became a non-human, non-human object. And this is Harold Silo's book the non-human environment, the non-human. But we discover this in schizophrenia. But really, the painful thing is we discover this here when in Argentina they killed 30,000 young boys, 30,000. They killed thousands. Uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Yugoslavia, uh, the Khmer Rouge, two millions. Uh, the Nazi, well, uh, it was uh, uh, gypsies, homosexuals, and Jews, millions. They, they became non-human in the schizophrenic part of the mind. We can explain this, uh, but we cannot stop this because we are only psychoanalysts. That's, uh, it makes me very, very sad. Uh, sono molto appenato. Io posso spiegare e meno soluzionare. It's very painful for what Freud started to write in his books about the meaning of the war, the, the evil. And uh, Christopher Bora has a book about the evil. By the way, we, we had a book together now, which is in press in London, about the Middle Age in a contemporary perspective. Uh, he had a book about the evil. La maldad in el uomo. Freud wrote this in the book, in the paper about uh, the war. And uh, what I, I, I try to say is uh, Harold Seed explained this in the schizophrenia. The other becomes a non human object. It's not a human person who can be taken uh, as a human being like me. Well, the, the only one who can explain what is the other for, for me, uh, as a human, is the great, the other teacher I had in psychoanalysis. I had a teacher in, uh, in Paris, in London, in Buenos Aires, in New York, California, uh, but the, the great teacher of all, you know, William Shakespeare. The great teacher of all is William Shakespeare who can explain what it means to be a human like you. Have I not my feelings? Have I not my senses? If you prick me up, I don't feel. If you... We have not the same sun, the same... 
music, the same water. If you kill me, I do not die. We have the same food. I am like you. But only a poet like Shakespeare can explain this. And only Shakespeare can explain the problem of identity. We had a lot of books about self-identity. But the one who explained better is William Shakespeare. The great, for me, the best one is the King Lear, Ray Lear, Le Roi Lear. Somebody can tell me who am I, said King Lear. He asked the family, please help me, help me. Somebody can tell me who am I? We need the help of the father and the mother and the family so the child had had a sense of own identity. And this is the other great teacher, Winnicott. I never meet him personally, but I read. And he's right. When I work with children, I had Winnicott here. Does not exist, does not exist the children alone. It's the family with the children. And I work with the family in my office or in the hospital. Does not exist a kid alone. And the family gives the identity. And I need to know the interchange, the communication between the boy, the kid, and the family to understand the, the, the children's mind. Only after I can have individual session with children and playing with toys here, but only after I, I had the, the family working with him together. Does not exist the children alone. 